How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for HabitsUnplugged.com. Today I wanted to talk about if you want to see changes in your life, if you want to see improvements in your life, then you're the one that's going to have to put those improvements into effect. You're the one that's going to have to make those changes. Nobody else is going to make them for you. You can get advice, you can get, um, you can read as much as you want, you can watch as many videos as you want, but until you actually start practicing um, the words and putting those words into action, then you're going to get nowhere. Um, about 10 years ago, I was really sick of where I was in my life. Um, I was living in Ireland, living in the rain and the cold and, you know, just uh, expecting or waiting for a summer time to come and the summer never came, you know, or you got a week of sunshine and earlier on in the year and then for the rest of the time you had nothing, you know, it was just back to the same old, same old. Um, I was working in forestry, it was a great job when I was working in it um, as a young man, but, you know, as you get older, you start to reassess some of the things that you're doing in life and that was one of the things that I was reassessing although though I was making good money doing it it was um, it was causing me a lot of knee pain and back pain and just not giving me a, a, the healthy lifestyle that you would expect you know it's a manual labor is a is a killer you know plus um, I was drinking big time um, I was smoking, uh, I was eating crappy foods, and in general, you know, my life was, it just wasn't going where I thought it was going. So we decided, myself and my partner, that we'd move to um, Spain. Uh, this is about, I suppose, about eight, eight and a half, nine years ago. And, you know, like I say, at the time, I, I, was, I was doing a lot of forestry, and I knew that coming to Spain, there was, you know, there was going to be no forestry. So it wasn't that everything was wrong. Um, there was just some of the things that I felt weren't right, you know, in my life. I mean, obviously, smoking and drinking. Smoking, I knew, uh, was wrong. And, and that was the time I, I stopped smoking. It was about eight years ago, nine years ago. Um, drinking, I didn't think then was, there was too much wrong with it. But, you know, there were other things as well. Uh, just the way of life, you know, it's, um, it's a big old world out there now. There's a lot of choices. There's a lot of opportunities. Uh, no matter where you are in life, you just have to grasp them. You know, you've got to make the decision and make some tough choices. Um, one of the tough choices I had to make was leaving my son in Ireland. Um, you know, we, we decided to move to Spain. Um, and we knew it wasn't going to happen overnight because obviously, as I said, I was working in forestry, so I had to change my occupation. Um, so it was going to take me two, maybe three years before I could do that, you know. So the first thing I did was I started looking around for something that I could do over here. And I'd been you know, working around online stuff in my part time as a sort of a habit thing. And... I decided to try and pursue that a bit further. So I started writing articles for uh, first online stuff. You know, I was getting paid uh, for writing articles for other people. And I was only getting paid a very small amount of money, you know, just to establish uh, a reputation for myself, you know, establish a business. So I think I was getting paid at the time. Uh, it was about 0.5 cents a word. So... Roughly, I was getting paid about two dollars, two dollars fifty per four hundred, five hundred word article, and like I say, you know, it was just to um, get the word out there. And you know, these articles didn't have to be great; they were basically filler articles for websites that were running AdSense. And the whole point of running any AdSense website, if you've seen AdSense, they're the ads that you find on any website that is running um, Google Ads, you know. And the whole point of the, the ads was you get people onto the website to read the content uh, through keywords. Um, and then uh, hopefully the people would find your stuff boring, that they'd find the website boring, and they click on the ad. And that was basically what the idea was. So you, you didn't want your 
articles to be too entertaining, you know. I mean, all this stuff was at the beginning um, and that started changing over time, you know, but that's a different story. Uh, Google started copying on to what people were doing and, you know, they wanted their the stuff that was listed, or any of the websites listed on their website to be, uh, to have good content, so they started penalising the, the bad content. Anyway, um, but I, I had a good business, you know, um, and I worked it up over three years uh, to making sort of a, a reasonable income for Spain, you know, so I think I was up to about $300 a week, uh, about 1200 a month, which was enough with whatever I got saved and uh, Esther would work as well. So, you know, all told, we, we'd be able to live a comfortable life. I mean, the standard of living over here is good, um, but the cost of living is only half of what it is over in Ireland. So, you know, the same amount of money that you're earning in Ireland, to spend in Ireland, you're, you're talking twice as much to go out, twice as much for your rent, twice as much for uh, a lot more for petrol, uh, for uh, tax and insurance and running a car and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's very, it's a high cost of living country. But um, just before we moved over here, um, as I say, Google changed the rules, you know, so uh, I don't know if, if you understand about Google and their, the way they, they set up the websites, it's all based on uh, an algorithm. And, you know, the algorithm says this and this and this and this and X is going to happen, but this is not going to happen, that's not going to happen. And, you know, I, I don't uh, presume to have any more than a very rudimentary understanding of, of, their, uh, of their algorithm and how it's set up. But the crux of it was that I lost um, four-fifths of my income. So we decided to move anyway, you know, this was about a month before we moved, maybe six weeks before we moved. And we decided to move anyway because we'd have everything set up, we'd you know, got the apartment organised. I mean, I had enough money to pay for the apartment for uh, for a year. Um, so, you know, we weren't in that much of a bad strait, you know, it was, it was just a bit scary, you know. But we continued anyway. Uh, and like I say, the hardest thing was to leave my son behind, you know, he was in his early 20s and I was hoping that I'd be able to convince him to come with us, but, um, you know, being that age, he wanted to uh, do his own thing. I think he, he saw the whole, the whole um, uh, us moving away as, as being an opportunity for himself to, to stretch his wings and do his own thing. And, you know, he has done, you know, he's, um, he's doing really well now, but, you know, I... We, when we moved here, I thought that everything was going to be, you know, just that change of environment was going to was going to um, herald everything else changing, you know, and the one change of environment was going to um, be the panacea for everything else. And I was wrong. I mean, we lived when we came over here first. We lived the life for six months, seven months. You know, it was a it was a good life. We came out and you know we we went out a lot. You know, as I say, it's cheap over here to do that kind of thing. Drank a lot of stuff. You know, the you can get a gallon of decent enough wine over here for five euros. So <laughs> we were uh, scoffing that back. Um, and really, my son was coming over. He came over in the first year that we were here. He came over three times, and it was really that last time that he came over um, on of that first year. Uh, in 2013, I think it was, um, or was it before that, 2012, 2012, I think, yeah. That first year he came over uh, for Christmas and we went out, uh, like I say, he's a young man and he was dying to uh, go out on the town, you know, so I went out with him uh, for a pub crawl um, around, I think it was just after the Christmas, so it was around the 27th, I think, 27th of December. And we've been drinking anyway, you know, I got a lot of drink into the house and that was my lifestyle back then. It was just, I was um, weighed 265, I was, you know, putting on the weight rapidly. Um, I mean, consider going from a, a, a manual job to basically sitting on my arse and uh, typing on a, on, a, on a keyboard for for a job, you know. Um, and uh, we went out for a, a pub crawl and um, we come out of this one particular pub at the end of the night and our apartment faced the beach so 
Uh, there was a lot of um, pubs and bars and restaurants along a promenade, sort of down to the, the, the south of where we were living. And um, we came out of this apartment and basically went out into the beach and had a wrestle, drunken wrestle on the beach, you know, just play acting and stuff. And it was only the following morning that he realised that he'd lost his phone. So I was sat on the balcony, I was covered in a blanket, um, nursing a fairly dark hangover. And I just remember seeing him walking on the beach with his head down, looking for this phone. And I realised that just I had to change so much about my life. So um, that was really the wake up call that I, that I needed. And you know, it doesn't take something massive. You know, in my case, it was something very small. Um, my son losing his phone to sort of wake me up and to think, well, what kind of a, what kind of a father am I? Where I'm taking my son out and I'm thinking that this is normal. You know, and I, I was grown up. I had grown up thinking this was normal. You know, this was my life. This is what we did. Uh, we went out to enjoy ourselves. We got drunk to enjoy ourselves, and um, you know that was just a fact of life. So. You know, that was really my own story to seeing that um, you can affect the changes in yourself and some of the stuff that you do in your life. Look at these things here, right? We're, we're maybe six or seven miles from the beach here. The beach is that way. And this is, these things are everywhere. This is uh, like, um, what would you call that? It's like a shell, it's a seashell but a fossilized to seashell. I mean, there's loads of them, look. There's one there. There's, a, there's another one there. Oh, there's another one. There's, there's another one. There's another one. Oh. I mean, that, that's a fossilized clam, or I don't know what it is. Um, but it just shows that change happens, you know? The sea was once here. In order for all this stuff to be, you know, um, for shells and stuff to be here, it proves that the sea is here. Look, there's another one. Look, look. that's like a, a mussel shell. Like I say, it's six miles that way to sea. Easy. So change does happen, you know. I mean, we're talking about big, big scale geological change here, but you know, you can change happens anyway with yourself. You know, change happens as a part of the day-to-day -day process. The problem is that most change in people's lives is undirected. It's, um, they're just allowing the change to happen, you know, they're not taking a hold of it and saying, well, I want to self-direct the change. I want to push myself where that change is going to be, you know. Um, but the whole point of this is to say, well, if you want the change to happen, right, if you want to see other things in your life if you want to do other things in your life you've got to take a hold of the reins of that change you know nobody else is going to do it for you um you've got to put up with the discomfort of change all change means discomfort to a certain level right to one change or another you know if you want to change yourself from being um overweight and flabby into being fit and um buff and muscular you've got to put up with an awful lot of discomfort in order to get to that level, you know. You've got to put a lot of hours in, in the gym, you know. If you just want to lose the weight, you know, you've got to put up with discomfort. If you want to quit drinking, you've got to put up with the discomfort of going through that process of changing your life um, and changing the day-to-day -day things where you would normally drink and you're not drinking anymore. Same thing if you want to quit smoking. You've got to put yourself through the uh, discomfort of not having a cigarette when you're making a telephone call, not having a cigarette after a meal, you know, not having a cigarette um, every hour, you know, not having a cigarette first thing in the morning, all those times when you would normally soothe yourself with a cigarette, you can't do that anymore. Uh, and you've got to do that and put yourself through that discomfort over and over and over again. You know, and the discomfort is going to be higher in the beginning, right? And it gradually diminishes over time, right? So it gets less and less and less. So the only thing that you can do is take it day by day by day, but nobody is going to make the change for you. You've got to initiate the change yourself. You've got to make that choice. You've got to take that decision that you're hundred percent committed to making the choice. And then you've got to um, initiate the action uh, and you've got to persist in that action.
So look, uh, I'm going to leave it there. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comment section. Um, if you want to see a topic for a video, then please uh, leave your comments as well in the, se in the comment section or leave them over it, uh, on habitsunplugged.com. Uh, um, this is the early video, so you know, if, if, if you know me from Alcohol Mastery, you know, I, I've done sort of over 700 videos and a lot of podcasts where I'm going, my name's Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com. Um, onwards and upwards right at the end of it, and it, it's just difficult to, to get out of that habit, you know. I mean, habits are difficult to kick off at the end of the day, but, um, you know, some habits are bad, some habits like this are sort of just, it makes no difference, you know, but, uh, you know, it's just the way of it. So, look, at the end of the day, if you want to succeed in this game of habit change, you've got to persist. Um, failure just cannot cope with persistence, right? It just crumbles under persistence. If you persist, then um, even if you fail, if you keep persisting, then eventually you'll succeed, you know? So just remember that there are three different um, P's of uh, habit change are persistence, positivity, and patience. You've got to have the persistence to uh, follow through you've got to keep positive in your mind as much as you can you know You're much better off with a positive thought than a negative thought and have patience you know this thing is not going to happen overnight you know uh, habit change small habit change can can um, can happen you know relatively quickly but big habit change and big lifestyle habit change is going to happen slowly so look until next time i'm kevin o'hara for alcohol <laughs> look <laughs> there you go I'm Kevin O'Hara for HabitsUnplugged.com. Uh.